Hey everyone, Sebastian here from Green Music Productions and today I have a really useful video. I'm going to show you how to change the tempo of a session and have every single tracks follow the new tempo that you set even audio tracks. I'm also gonna explain to you the difference between the musical mode on the events themselves and the track musical mode. So as usual, if you like that kind of stuff, click the like button and subscribe. And before we start, let's hear from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, video, freelancing, and obviously music. Whether it's music theory, learning an instrument, music production, even the music business, there's a ton of content on there. There's even specific things like how to make beats, how to design great synth sounds, or even Cubase specific videos. To give you an example, I've been following this class by Will Edwards called Wavetable Sound Design Strategy, and it's really insightful. It gives you a lot of tools to create better synth sounds. Now most classes are under 60 minutes with short lesson to fit any schedule and you have access to thousands of classes for less than $10 a month if you take the annual subscription. So I'll leave a link in the description below. The first thousand people to use the link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Make sure to check it out and keep learning. So here I have a session with MIDI files, audio files, some instruments. It's at 92 BPM right now. So first let's listen to how it sounds like. Cool, so let's say I'm working on this track and I think, well, I think it's a bit too slow. I would like to speed it up a little. Uh, let's say I want to try to raise the BPM. Now take a closer look at what's happening with the MIDI file and the audio files. I'll raise it to 110 BPM progressively. So as you can see, the MIDI file shrank to match the new BPM, but the audio files, they moved around, but now they're overlapping, so that might not be right. So let's listen to it now. Yep, so uh, the drums, everything that was in MIDI followed 110, but the audio tracks are still playing at 92 BPM. So how can we solve that? I'm gonna make it super simple for you. So the manual is probably telling you to just select all of the audio events you want to follow the BPM and enable the musical mode. Uh, you can do it either in the pool window by pressing Control P, uh, making sure that the musical column is there. If, you, if it's not there, you can always click here and enable it from here. And now you can press the little box for all the tracks you would like to follow the tempo or the easiest way is to toggle it from here the info line if you don't see the info line you can click on that gear icon over here and enable it from here the info line is really useful by the way you have access to a lot of options like raise or lower the volume of these events transpose it fine tune it enable uh, musical mode or mute those events right from here so that's really useful but now let's take a look at what it does if you follow what the manual says. So if I enable the musical mode, so some new icons appeared, but something weird happened. Uh, the, this event moved, so let's disable it. So it keeps moving around and it's really weird. And that's because it doesn't really know, the, the track doesn't really know at what tempo we're at right now. So the easiest way to do this, and it's super simple, is to select all the audio events you would like to follow the tempo, go under audio right here advanced and select set definition from tempo now don't confuse that with set tempo from event because that's the opposite so if we select set definition from tempo so it's gonna tell the audio event that we're 92 bpm and there's also an option right here saying set all tracks to musical time base so that's what we're gonna do so if we click ok now 
The musical mode is there for those events, but it didn't move around. And we now have a note icon. That means that those events are in musical mode and the wave icon means that they're time stretched or time stretchable. So let's try it again and let's move it to 110 BPM and take a look at what's happening. They shrank, they didn't, they don't overlap anymore. So let's listen to what it did. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Now let's try to slow it down and see how it sounds like. So let's put it at something crazy like 75. That sounds great. If you ever think that it doesn't sound too good, you can always try to change the algorithm that Cubase is using to time stretch those events. If you select them, once again in the info line, there's something called algorithm right beside the musical mode. So you can click on that and try different algorithms. Usually the default one, which is Elastic Pro Time works really well, but you also have other options like pitch, tape. The tape will change the pitch if you slow it down and will raise the pitch if you put it to a higher BPM. So there's a lot of options, but as I said, usually the default one works really well. Now, a quick note, if you're trying to enable the musical mode on a really, really small event, let's say I load a kick hit, just a small event right here. If I try to enable the musical mode by selecting it and clicking on musical, it's not going to let me do it. And that's because it's too small. So if we time stretch that event, it's going to sound bad. So the important thing is not to time stretch it, but to make sure that it always stays sync with the BPM in the ruler. Which brings me to my next point, which is this small button right here. A lot of people confuse that button with this musical mode, but it's two completely different things. What this does is it tells the different audio events to either sync to the BPM or the time. So right now I have both in my ruler. I have a BPM ruler and a time ruler. So if we take a look at this event right here, for example, it starts at bar two, uh, but it also starts at 3.2 seconds. So if right now the musical mode is enabled, if I change the tempo, it's always gonna start at bar two and it's not gonna care about the time. But let's say you're working on a movie, for example, and you have some sound effects and they're all synced to uh, the video. You don't want them to move around when you change the tempo, you only want the music to move around. So you might set those tracks to time linear instead. So instead of locking to the BPM, they will lock to the seconds. So now if I move the tempo again, let's take a look at this track it stays synced to 3.2 seconds and it doesn't care about the BPM. So that's what it's used for. So it is really useful, but it's a bit confusing for newcomers. But if basically you want all of your tracks to follow the BPM, the only thing you have to do, you select them, you go under audio, advanced, set definition from tempo, you make sure to enable the musical time base, you click OK and you will be fine. So there's a really cool story about that feature actually. Uh, Steinberg rep once told me that the Michael Jackson engineer called them and asked them how he could do that. And obviously they gave him the info and apparently Michael Jackson grabbed the phone and said thank you on the phone. So I don't know if that story is true, but it came from a Steinberg rep. So I think it's true. It's a really nice story. As usual, if you like that kind of stuff, click the like button and subscribe and make sure to leave me a comment in the section below to let me know what you would like to see from me in the future if there are specific things you would like me to cover. So thank you for watching and see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.